Can you just uh, first tell me three things, your name, your title, and what seat you're sitting in? Okay, uh, my name is Wiza Jalakasi. Uh, I'm VP of Developer Relations at Chipper Cash. I am currently in 24L. <laughs> 24C. 24C, yeah. 24C. That's my seat. Yeah, that's your seat. Uh, I have a seat further up front. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're, we're on this like flight to Cape Town, so I'm super, super excited about that. So I've, I've been thinking about if I have one or two questions to ask everybody on this flight, um, what, what it's going to be. For you in particular, we first did a podcast like two years ago yeah. where we talked about mobile money 2.0 yeah and obviously yeah. you've come a long way in your evolution of um for, for you in your career and um i think also like your perspective and point of view on the fintech ecosystem at large so i'd be curious to get your perspective on um like if you had to rewrite you know like a, a the, the two year later update for mobile money 2.0 what exactly would you talk about now and like what has been very top of mind for you in terms of um, like what's happening in the fintech space at large? Yeah, um, I think that's a great question. Thank the, you. The most uh, prevalent thing or the most exciting thing that I see that's a recurring uh, across uh, geographies and across product stacks is the idea of interoperability and like native interoperability. So there's a, there's a very big convergence of uh, uh, mobile money systems and uh, infrastructure coming into place to facilitate that convergence and allow uh, people to move their value across different apps, across different financial services providers much more easily than uh, exists today. That didn't seem to be the case two years ago. Um, another big one that's difficult to ignore is uh, around the blockchain space specifically. Um, we see a lot of increase in activity uh, on a peer-to-peer -peer perspective industry-wide in terms of uh, crypto transfers. The Chainalysis uh, State of the Industry report for last year put that at about $100 billion in value being transacted peer-to-peer -peer, uh, across African wallets, which I think is very, very uh, key to pay attention to. Uh, and then also just the, the evolution of regulation um, and the uh coming into being of regulatory frameworks that further uh reduce the barriers to entry for for people to access these financial services most most countries now allow you to like completely sign up and kyc yourself digitally uh which wasn't the case uh, as much before there was still like a, a a very big uh human and physical location requirement that we're starting to see uh, chip away in, in very very exciting ways so those three things are the ones that stand out the most to me Mm -hmm. And you you back then talked about like, uh, you know, m mobile money applications and, and, you know, smartphone native mobile money having to get like a little bit smarter. Right. Mm -hmm. So has that has that manifested? And then um, my, my second question to that is, so if, if that has happened, what then does what what now needs to happen or what, what would you like to see happen for the fintech ecosystem to advance in the way you hope for it to advance yeah i think there's been a ton of uh progress on that front in terms of like you know moving the brain of the mobile money engine up away from the sim card onto the smart device and you know i think the biggest clear example of this is uh the safaricom app uh the mpesa app you know previously you would require your sim card every time to authenticate transactions but now once you open uh, an mpesa account you can use the app to transact fully and like complete your pin purchases inside the app um we're gonna see like more and more trends like that emerge especially from the telco side um the sim card is no longer becoming the thing that makes uh, a subscriber belong to a telco uh, it's usually just like a gateway to the internet for for most smartphone users and i think that decoupling um of the logic from the sim card is going to be is, is a very very powerful thing that we're starting to see um, you also do see like examples, clear examples of uh, interoperability that would otherwise not be possible if the mobile money engine was not sitting uh, in the in higher up the stack. So if you look at startups like the Peer, um, who are basically orchestrating uh, native interoperability between uh, neo banks and, and 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 new types of mobile financial service wallets in Nigeria uh, to start, 
I think that's a very, very exciting thing. It's like fintechs are almost building their own little mini switch um, that doesn't rely on any legacy uh, infrastructure. And because of their flexibility, you know, it's not hard to imagine a world in which that switch is maybe sitting on top of a blockchain, uh, as an example, for the sake of efficiency. Um, so, you know, what I would love to see, I think, is just like more and more uh, uh, changes, progressive changes in the regulation to further lower the barriers to access. I think the, the barriers are still very high, especially when it comes to uh, enabling Africans uh, specifically to participate in global industries uh, with the value that they have uh, digitally and to be able to move that more freely around. Uh, a lot of the intra-Africa trade um, is, is, is almost premised on the assumption that you're going to use the US dollar for some transaction. And I think the regulation has a long way to evolve to allow greater liquidity between uh, intra-Africa currency pairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then um, my last question, we just had a, a, a nice week in Nairobi. You sort of uh, organized a lot of stuff and a, 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 a nice um, time for everyone in the ecosystem to get together. Is there anything else like you're thinking about in that regard? Obviously, you've got a very um, a very sort of uh, like startup and ecosystem facing role with Chipper is um, is there anything else like across the ecosystem that you're thinking about or that you wish would see happen or that is particularly exciting to you? Not necessarily even from a fintech perspective, but um, just in general, uh, given the fact that we just had a had a, a nice weekend, all of us hanging out together in Nairobi. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that it feels like we're uh, approaching the tail end of the COVID-19 pandemic. In very uh, as we sit here in masks. Yeah, <laughs> but we are on the plane and the border between South Africa and Kenya is open. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah, you know, there's like little uh, steps that I think are, are, are definitely in the right direction. Um, the thing that obviously excites me most is just like the coming of age of certain startups. It's so interesting to see um, some of my friends, some founders that I know personally, um, their businesses are growing and, and really starting to uh, cement themselves in the ecosystem in very tangible ways. Um, I'm really excited about like more and more Africa-based angel investors, giving people a head start. That wasn't the case when I was getting started. Um, the quality of talent is also really great now, especially from a technical and engineering perspective. Um, we have many tenured and experienced engineers. Um, I, I do think there's a lot more work that we need to do to continue that, that pipeline, uh, to ensure that that pipeline is, is uh, always flowing. Because right now, I think with the influx of capital, um, some of the smaller businesses that may not be uh, as well capitalized are going to really struggle to attract and retain uh, talent, both in uh, technical and non-technical talent. So, you know, I see like initiatives like the Talent City in Lagos, Talent QL. Um, I think those are like definitely things that we need to do more of. And all of us who are in the ecosystem as operators need to play a more active role in ensuring that the next generation of operators like us have a platform through which they can be successful. And I, I don't know if I see enough of efforts in that direction, and, and I, I definitely think we can we can all do more. Mm. So um, we've got a, a, a quite a group of people on this plane right now. Who who should I talk to next? Um, well, uh, one of my favorite people is De Delilah from uh, Koa. I think she's uh, always a fantastic person to chat to. Uh, we've got Tesh on the flight as well from Market Force. They just currently raised, napping. Yeah, taking a nap. Uh, just raised for I think a forty million dollars series A raise. We'll do that to you. I can just imagine the amount of DD he had to deal with. Definitely got newbie right behind me from Pace. He just went up and went to the bathroom. Yeah, I was looking. yeah, and I think that that's that's going to be a fantastic next person to chat to because he's right here. Um, and yeah, there's there's a lot of work that they're going to be doing this year in the ecosystem. So that should be fun. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.